First question is Tell me it's not a selfie video. Hmm? It's not a selfie video. What do you mean? It's for both of us. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Tamwa. I'm Anjola. We're just gonna share a little bit about our journey with you. Yep. Um, the girls have given us seven questions to go through, so we're just gonna go through them. We'll jump and, right in. Yeah, really excited to answer. Cool, um, cool, cool. So, first question is. Tell me, it's not a selfie video. Hmm? It's not a selfie video. What do you mean? It's for both of us. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, so <laughs> question is, what do you think God's calling is for you within the body of Christ? <laughs> Got a question now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that the the calling for me specifically, because I feel like we have individual callings, mm -hmm. but also we have a calling together, mm -hmm. um, being married. Um, so I've kind of like been learning how those differ and how, how they really complement each other. Mm -hmm. um, I feel for me personally, um, a big call of my life is just to be an encourager, like encourage people, um, build the body um, of Christ, not necessarily a big group of people, but the body of Christ is like every individual that I meet mm -hmm. as well. So it's kind of been... Um, getting uh my head around what that really means um personally and how i can really press into that using my talents and gifts um in the body to yeah. serve people to mm -hmm. love them mm -hmm. um even people who aren't christians as well to mm -hmm. serve them to love them mm -hmm. um as christ did um i'm in a position where right now i feel like my calling in a way is still in discovering but one thing that i know that i've been called to do is to be a leader it's it's not you know me trying to you know just claim this vague answer but i know generally god is calling me to lead people i find that i'm quite influential in my friendship circles and god i feel like a lot of time there's that there's that it's almost like i shy away from it i, I don't like it it makes me feel uncomfortable to feel you know this leader is like what is that mm -hmm. but i just feel i don't really like that tag and i don't like to you know almost feel like i have to tell people this and this and that but naturally people gravitate towards me and they want to know oh what is the best thing to do it could even be something silly like what should i wear today and i'm just like oh, what am i supposed to tell you kind of thing <laughs> But I just really feel like it's been it's been made clearer as time has gone, which is mm. why it's even more important for me to watch myself. Because if God puts you in a position where, you know, he's called you to influence people and to help people, you need to check yourself because you can't just give them generic information or mm. information that looks right at that point in time. Yeah. You have to be giving them that God led information. And so that's why I even feel like this season is even more important for me to watch myself and make sure that I'm actually referring to God in everything that I do. So yeah, hope that's not too vague. Um, that's my answer to that. <laughs> no, question. it makes complete sense. And I see it in him all the time, um, that leadership quality. And in fact, let me tell you something funny. Um, when we first um, started dating, mm -hmm. I suppose our whole way through, um, we, we both have kind of like leadership qualities in us. So I thought me me wanting to be a leader, me wanting to, you know, to um, take that kind of position in ministry and in, you know, in general life, I suppose. How am I actually going to submit and you know be okay with having such a husband who's like firm and you know <laughs> this is the advice that kind of thing um it was it was really interesting ground but um yeah I actually heard in the message that I just listened to she mentioned that um it's important to see that strength comes in so many different forms and yeah to support him in, in what he's supposed to do as well so yeah, I suppose that's that's our marital purpose. We've really revealed a lot about each other individually yeah. um so far. But yeah, we yeah, we have a joint calling as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. we just saw our next door neighbour, so we, we had to right. wave. <laughs> <laughs> uh cool, what's the next one? Mm. How do you incorporate God into your day to day activities? Okay, I love I'll, it. Do you wanna go first? Yes. So <laughs> we've been reading a wonderful book that we that we can we can I say we she always wants to add me to whatever go on you can I'm I'm, I'm a bookworm but yeah we would highly recommend <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> she would highly recommend <laughs> it's called the purpose driven life you would yeah, recommend it's a great it, book, sorry, book hey? to be honest yeah and um in that book um the the last chapter that we just
just read it was just talking about how we need to cultivate friendship with God and it's not just in you know having the quiet time in the morning but it is in that continuous um just just acknowledging him he's always there like we have a God who is ever present he's mm-hmm. like ever present how he said that he'll never leave or forsake us so knowing that like he's actually um the, the only thing that's left to do is to acknowledge that mm. and um yeah so day to day I think that um that's something that we've been trying to apply just like even when if we're away from each other if we're together like just find a scripture like sing a song like you always have something that reminds you that yeah. god is with you and i feel like in these moments it's it's more important than ever mm-hmm. because um sometimes life can feel like it's it's draining there's mm-hmm. so much going on the I world agree. has such a depressing message I agree with you. at the moment yeah so like come kind of coming back to the place where you acknowledge that you have hope and like that hope remains with you all the Mm. time and you can acknowledge that when you're washing dishes and when you're like you know having a laugh with the family like wow god has given me family Mm -hmm. that's very kingdom you know yeah Yeah, that's that's been that's been really important so i suppose yeah in anything in everything and anything that's how we incorporate that's how i incorporate god in my day today yeah would you echo that yeah it's the same for me to be honest Mm -hmm. i'm not just trying to save time um but it is (laughs) is literally the same for me so i would literally echo completely with that yeah So the next one is, can you name an example of when God answered a prayer of yours? Wow. Wow. Um, There's been too many. In the fellowship where I attend at the moment, so it's called the Response Response UK. Um, So essentially we have like a weekly meeting where we all come together in small groups just to talk and to pray and to do whatever it is that we feel is right at that point in time. And it's funny because the topic that we're discussing right now is prayer. Mm. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, now I look at it and the more we talk about prayer, the more that I see that, wow, God is actually a very interesting it's, God. Prayer is like a tapestry. Literally, literally. Yeah. literally. Mm. And, you know, I'm just learning different parts of it. And I'm not trying to run away from the question because it's like, if I was to tell you examples of when God has answered my prayer, everything you know the life that i live right now is an answered prayer the life that i live right now is an answered prayer of my parents my mom and dad literally spent their years praying for my brothers and myself and by the grace of god we turned out quite well i would like to think um but even one thing i'm learning is even when you think prayers are not being answered your prayers literally god is not a god that never answers prayers Mm. his timing might be different because his ways are far above our ways Mm -hmm. however there's always answered prayers it's just when and where and i learned about something it's something called the dummy was it the domino effect i can't remember oh yeah yeah this prayer course so basically domino the domino effect is so think of prayer as placing dominoes okay so when you pray you place one domino the next time you pray you place another domino and over and over and over again so just think of every single prayer point as a domino thing about dominoes is you know once you place them in the right order no matter how many dominoes you might have even if it's 2000 dominoes once you place them in the right order once you push one from the back every single one of them is going to go stumbling over no mm-hmm. matter what no matter what as long as you're consistent with your dominoes the second something pushes just that one over everything is going to follow over and that's our prayer is a lot of times we think this prayer is not being answered no that doesn't mean it's been answered that just means god knows what he's doing he's biding his time mm-hmm. he's setting an agenda for that time and that season mm-hmm. there might be something else that you need to be doing at that present point in time but that doesn't mean that prayer has been answered because once god decides to answer your prayer the other two thousand points they're going to come stumbling down but the only issue with this domino is such that Think about dominoes. You know, if you miss out one or two dominoes, the problem is there becomes a divide. So if you place 2000 dominoes and then you left a space of two dominoes and then you keep placing consistent dominoes again, unfortunately, it's just going to stop at that place where you literally took a break. So where you stopped praying, where you stopped being consistent, unfortunately, due to the fact maybe it was doubt, maybe it was fear, the second you stop praying, no matter what you've already left out a site you've already left out a space that could have been an answered prayer so what i'm just trying to say is 
you know thinking of prayer do not just think about it as the pleasant times the times when things look to be working because mm. god knows what he's doing as i said his ways are far above our ways so it's not about what it looks like to us let's just keep going because it, it's, it's just got a beautiful sight of everything we're looking from the ground down it's not necessarily as clear mm. i hope all my rambling is making sense but yeah i'm learning that consistency even when we don't think it's going right that is even the time to even be more focused. So what about um, like a personal example of how God has come through for you? And like, There's been you know. so many. It's like, where do I start from? Mm. Where do I start Life's from? Life's testimony. <laughs> there's, there's been so many. Literally, <laughs> it's like this marriage is a testimony. My life is a testimony. My dad's life is a testimony. My dad's health is a testimony. Mm. And this where practical prayer points that God has given. And it's like most things it's like the funny thing is you pray you don't realize a couple of years time that's when it's like whoa yeah that was actually an answered prayer so it's just funny we take god for granted even in the fact that we eat food and we digest food that is a testimony because some people try to do that on a daily basis and it doesn't happen mm. it's just unfortunate it's really really mm. true i think yeah it's it's really important to open our eyes to answered prayer and like just on that point that you said about when um you know our marriage when we were actually getting married we were praying and lord may it happen you know in the next few months that kind of thing like we really wanted to get to the altar um <laughs> but then it, there was a delay and it was kind of like lord i thought this is your will like you know we're we're young christians and we you know we want to do the right thing by your word and we just want to you know just get this out of the way and we thought you would even want it faster like what's going on <laughs> um but in that season we carried on praying for the will of god for the will of god and when it actually came to our wedding day it was so much better mm -hmm. than we ever could have thought it would be and mm -hmm. also during the time of waiting during the time of delay what we call delay god was actually changing our characters and and putting our hearts in a in a position where we knew how to tarry like mm -hmm. we knew how to have patience, patience and the fruits of the spirit Spirit that we needed in marriage like literally the next day we had to apply those fruits mm -hmm. because we had experienced like so many different things where we had to you know come together as a couple and say okay what do we do next literally. and um we needed the fruits mm -hmm. and it's funny how like god sees so far ahead mm -hmm. the scriptures say that we only see in part mm -hmm. and it's so so true so final question guys um has, oh, too soon. <laughs> has accepting god um, as accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, change the way you view yourself? And if so, how? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Whoever wrote this question is like, God bless you. I really love it. Um, in so, so many ways, mm -hmm. in so many ways, it kind of links back to what I was saying earlier about, um, like, knowing that the lamb has strength too like the the having peace roars and um i think that that's something that i've learned since coming to christ before christ i used to think that um you know as a woman like if you don't stand up for yourself if you don't you know yeah like sh show people what your boundaries are what you need that also has a place but um Christ, the way it comes through with Christ is mm -hmm. different from when you're trying to assert yourself, yeah. when you're trying to get things for yourself, when you're trying to win for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, it's totally different. And that's something that I've definitely learned through the years. And it's literally like hot and cold change <laughs> from um, being out of Christ and being in Christ. Um, since being in Christ, I feel like I've grown in so many more gentle traits, which I never thought I could have. I never thought that I could be gentle. I never thought that I could be, um, you, you know, peaceable. If you know about 10 was past, guys. Yo, <laughs> yo, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so since being in Christ, I feel like I've really, really um, learned the value of just, you know, of just allowing God to win for yeah. me and not having to strive. There's no striving in the presence. There's no mm. striving um, when it comes to the kingdom. There's, there's work to do, but when yeah. the work comes out of love, it's different from you're trying to win for yourself. Mm. It's a completely different message. Mm, mm, mm. And um, that's something that I'm finding more comfort in as I as I grow in the Lord. Sometimes it's totally uncomfortable because human nature kicks in and says, oh, yeah. yo, like you need to get it together for yourself. Yeah. Or, like this person's gonna walk all over you. Or, that's you just know. the way, that's just the way the world works. The yeah. world's always teaching you to get things yourself mm -hmm. and be mr or mrs independent and it's yeah. not it's not it's not like that because one thing you see is in the world unfortunately millionaires you know footballers actors actresses people with all this you know 
glamour, Everything. you know, yeah. glamorized kind of roles or jobs, they still end up being in the same position, depression. And, you know, unfortunately, you all this unfortunate event still occurs in their life. And that just shows me that the kind of hope that the world needs in fact, this season's making that clearer, mm. that the kind of hope the world needs, it's not in what we categorise as, you know, amazing. Because at the point, you know, at this point in time, hope without God, it's literally pointless. Yeah. You know, we happen to be in the time and in the season where, for the first time, the richest man in the you know the richest man in the city and the poorest man in the village and the city are fighting for the same thing everyone's They're trying all to get toilet roll, <laughs> tissue paper, paper yeah they're all trying to fight to you know to just the basic things and mm. god is just you know humbling us and teaching us that look all those things that you thought look push it away yeah. and i think that's one thing that's amazing about it. having christ you know mm. accepting christ into my life you know i just believe it just gives you hope mm. you know hope that Hope that nothing else can give you. Hope yeah. that even money can can't give you. Because mm -hmm. right now in this season, I feel so encouraged. Even though things are not necessarily going the way I planned for it to go, but I know that God, the same God that said, "Look, Angie, Temwa, I know my plans for you," and He knows that the plans for us is to prosper and to give us hope in the future. So, for what reason am I going to be depressed? For what reason am I going to be sad or think, "Oh, yeah, this is the end of the world"? Even if it's the end of the world, as long as I remain faithful, I know there's there's a better place. This is not the final yeah. place. So, you know, just that hope, and I think like sometimes we take that for granted because hope and hopelessness that's the difference between so people big. actually thinking mm -hmm. there's a future and there is and that's the difference between people that think there's no point in living and the people that think i i, I can't yeah. wait for tomorrow even if i'm not yeah. going to get money even if i don't have the best job even if my family are not happy mm. and yeah so for me that is definitely that is definitely one reason why i'm so glad that i you know i accepted god into my life i accepted jesus into my life and mm -hmm. i would advise anyone watching this as in taking that decision it might seem so trivial but trust me there's so much happiness there's so much joy there's so much grace to be found it's not something to be taken for granted it is it is the most beautiful thing in the world to have a relationship with jesus christ and please just accept him into your life i just pray whoever's watching this right now that you just take that minute right now and take that step of faith take that step of boldness because being christian doesn't make you boring it doesn't mm -hmm. we do youtube on a regular basis we have yeah. fun we we're married we're more fun to me than you <laughs> <laughs> we, we, you know we travel we have good jobs we, we're mm -hmm. living you know a life that people still associate it's you know a, a good life by the grace of god okay. but we're still very faithful in the calling that we have upon our lives so christianity doesn't have to be that mundane you know boring we're yeah. full gammon and not be able to talk to nobody no mm -hmm. it just means you have hope and you have god in your life yeah. so please take that decision and take that step of faith because it's the best thing you can do amen and it really is relationship over routine yeah. because when you accept christ and the hope that comes with christ the bible says that hope makes not ashamed and it's so so true like you can never be ashamed when you have hope you can never be ashamed when you have your eyes on eternity yeah so yeah like absolutely i echo that amazing Did amazing you know? so thank you so much guys it's been some wonderful questions mm -hmm. thank you so much for watching have a fantastic week have a fantastic fantastic weekend and i pray mm -hmm. that god keeps and bless every one of you Amen. see you soon god bless see you soon Bye bye, bye.